Okay, so your net torque gives me zero. Um, so let's talk about this. Uh, a five meter, 10 kilogram seesaw, so the uh, seesaw itself weighs 10 kilograms, um, and it's five meters long, is bounced by a little girl that obviously weighs much less than her father, or has less mass than her father. Um, at opposite ends of shown below, how far from the seesaw center must the fulcrum be placed? Okay. <clears throat> um, so fulcrum's right here. So you're trying to um, find actually the right balance. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Now this symbol here, um, This is called summation notation. Maybe if you're in pre you covered it. Uh, I know we didn't do it in algebra two. Summation notation, it's just, it's a Greek, it's called sigma. And it's just used to represent something you're adding up. So for example, um, say I wanted to add up everyone's test grades. Then what I do is I say, okay, so some kid got 100%, some kid got 90%, some kid got like 85%, then someone got like 95%, dot, dot, dot. It's just uh, to represent a sum. So it's just a notation that was people use. Um, but the sum of your net torque, or your net torque, I guess, or some of all the torques, you don't really have to use net, I guess, but some of all torques is just gonna be zero. Uh, so what we need to do is uh, figure out the torque for uh, both the daughter and the father. Okay, <clears throat> so let's work this out. Let me change colors here, I'll go red. Um, so it's gonna be um, torque of the girl um, plus, give me a sec here, the torque of the seesaw itself. Yeah. <clears throat> Plus the torque of the father. And all that's supposed to equal zero. So <clears throat> why am I looking at the seesaw? Because the seesaw, the center of mass, of the seesaw is right there. So there's two things that are a certain distance away from the fulcrum. Um, so that we're gonna do. <laughs> and you think of this like, um, <clears throat> And we'd assume, um, well, I don't know, there's a lot of different things we could assume here, but let's look at the uh, torque of the girl. Her force uh, is gonna be um, the weight due to gravity, but the force of the girl, and we'll call it actually, um, yeah, I'll just force girl. the race of the girl. And her force is going straight down as well, as well as the dad. So in her case, it's gonna be 25 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. 
And then her distance is going to be interesting. Um, that's 2.5 meters because this is the center right here, right? Plus X. So that's going to be her torque. The torque of the seesaw is going to be a force of the seesaw. And the force, again, referring to the weight due to gravity, because that's what's pulling down on it, right? That's the only force experience is just gravity. Times the radius. And when we say radius, we're talking about the radius from the, the pivot point. So this is our pivot point. Uh, so in this case, it's going to be 10 kilograms. I'm going to raise some stuff here because I don't need it. times 9.8 meters per second squared. And then that's just times X, because the center of the seesaw, the center of the mass of the seesaw to the fulcrum is X. And finally, for the dad. The torque of the dad is gonna be the force of the dad times the radius. Now, the one thing that gets kind of interesting is that he's on the other side of the fulcrum. So, <clears throat> Uh, we're actually going to say um, 2.5 minus X for his radius. And 80 kilograms is his weight times 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, the part that's going to be a little funky is I do have to put a negative sign next to him. Now, I could have done a negative sign next to the girl in the seesaw, but you're going to have to keep, because one is in the opposite direction. Uh, it's, you can kind of think of like maybe he's rotating. He's going in that direction, and she's going in that direction. If you want to think of it that way, she's counterclockwise, and he's clockwise. So that's where we're making him negative and we're making her positive. Because in order for her to get this thing in motion, when her force is applied, it's going in a counterclockwise direction. When the father's force is applied, he's going in a clockwise direction. Um, but you're going to have to actually have to make one side negative, one side positive. Um, so now we're actually going to do some algebra here. Before I do the algebra, any questions so far about how I set these up? And again, we're assuming that um, the force being applied is purely perpendicular because the weight due to gravity, which is pointing straight down. So when I set up my equation, it's going to be uh, 25 times 9.8 times 2.5 plus x plus 10 times 9.8 times x minus 80 times 9.8 times 2.5 minus x equals zero. <clears throat> um, you could actually, um, I mean, you could probably factor out 9.8 if you wanted to, um, but that's okay. Let me kind of just show you uh, what we got. You get 612.5 when you do 25 times 9.8 times 2.5 uh, plus 245x. So that's gonna be all this right here. Then plus uh, 98x, that's kind of easy. And then this, you get 1960x, sorry, 1960, and do minus a negative becomes plus 784x equals zero. Uh, combine like terms, <clears throat> you should get 1120, so you should get a negative 1347.5 plus 1127 equals zero. Uh, that's sorry, it's 1127x, my bad. And when you move things around, um, I trust you guys can do the algebra here. X is going to equal 1.2 meters. 
So you actually, you could test this out if you were to find like some sort of a thing that can act as a pivot point, like a fulcrum, get a long board and get two people and get the masses. You can actually um, test on and see what you would have to do to make it balanced. Um, so that's um, going to be um, <clears throat> um, where you have to position it. The next part um, is then saying, okay, um, how much force must a fulcrum support? Um, so if we take a look at that one, That's X right there. So let me go ahead and clear. So any questions about how I got X again? About the algebra? And, and again, you have to calculate the torque because each of these are applying a rotation around the pivot point. Okay, uh, let me go clear that. So in this case, the sum of all the forces, right? So much force must the fulcrum support. So the sum of all the forces, so again, this stands for summation, let me write that more nicely. <clears throat> See that? Let me explain all these things represent in just a second. So what's happening here is that this is gonna be the weight of the girl. Which is clearly pointing down. That right there is gonna represent the weight of the father. Which is also clearly pointing down. And then, so we'll say father and girl. And this is going to be the force of the fulcrum. Um, which is just going to be pointing in that opposite direction. Because it's got to counteract the force of the um, girl and the father. So, <clears throat> and we expect things to balance out because it's not like the fulcrum, it's not like the seesaw is levitating off the ground. Um, so it's negative 25 times 9.8 minus 80 times 9.8 because that's uh, gravity, right? Remember, weight is a uh, mass times. Uh, the associated due to gravity, plus the force of the fulcrum. Equals zero. Work all out. The force it is supporting the course is 1,029 newtons, if you work it out. So <clears throat> now I think it's a good time to actually have you guys try um, 8, 9, 10. Uh, they're a little bit more involved. Um, and I'll give you guys an average of five minutes per question. Then we'll come back and discuss them. Then we'll do a lunch break after that. So I'm going to clear my drawings, stop sharing.